What's going on, y'all? It's JD Pakel. Today on CFB with JD, we're going CFP with JD, telling you what the college football playoff rankings should look like come tomorrow night. Welcome into CFB with JD, the people's channel for all things college football content on YouTube. Y'all drive the show, Armstrong Sims and Jack McKenzie, they do the heavy lifting. So listen, we had a crazy, crazy week of college football. Probably one of the best weekends, one of the best rivalry weekends for sure of college football that these eyeballs have ever seen. And likely yours, unless your eyeballs have seen all of college football. Uh, that's a whole other project we gotta look into. But listen, we're gonna give you the college football playoff ranking, CFP with JD, true to form. We're gonna do this every single week. We're gonna give you our college football playoff ranking rankings before the next rankings get released on Sunday. Listen, the committee, they tell you, hey, we need till Tuesday. They're lying to you because if they were telling you the truth, they would get it on every Sunday like they do Selection Sunday. We're not like that. We're going to give it to you right now on a Monday. So listen, the best team in the country, we say this every week. It's not a surprise. You know it. We know it. Probably they even know. It. Everybody else in the country knows it. The Georgia Bulldogs are number one. And listen, they took care of business. They took care of Georgia Tech. Clean, good old-fashioned hate. One of the coolest rivalry names in the country, in all of college football history, they rolled 45 to zero. They play Alabama next week, I say this coming week, in the SEC title game. And here's the thing, everyone's talking about how bad Alabama looked, right? Alabama looked bad, but guess who they have as a head coach? Nick Saban. You think Nick Saban's gonna let him just walk in and make it just a blowout of a game? I don't think so. Here's what I wanna see. Can Stetson Bennett allow Georgia to win this game? They haven't had to depend on him too much because the defense is unbelievable. They've got skill players all over the place. They run the football well. But what happens when Bryce Young challenges them a little bit? What happens when they take away the run game? Can Stenson Bennett be that guy? I have stuck with this belief the entirety of the season. I think JT Daniels is your best quarterback on your roster. I digress. They're the best team in the country. Just want to give you a little bit more of something to chew on. At number two, we have the Michigan Wolverines. Last week, they were at number six in our poll. They were number five in the CFP last week. Listen, I don't think there's any doubt they're the second best team in the country. The final score, 42 to 27 in a win against Ohio State. Their first time beating their arch nemesis since 2011. This was, in fact, the year for John Harbaugh and his, excuse me, John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh. John Harbaugh had other things he was doing on Sunday. Uh, this was the year for him and his team. They dominated the line of scrimmage, 297 rushing yards to Ohio State 64. You're going to win a lot of football games, and you're definitely winning that football game against Ohio State. So they have to play Iowa in the Big Ten Championship. How do they match up with Iowa? We're going to unpack that more in future videos, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. But Iowa presents a little bit of a matchup issue for Michigan. They kind of play a similar style of football, ground and pound, play good defense, run the football. We'll see if a hard place meets a rock. Rock meets a hard place. Immovable object meets a stoppable force in the Big Ten Championship game. I'm not going to pick that game, but just something to keep an eye on as the chaos unfolds this coming weekend. At number three, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide. And listen, we're going to get a lot of heat for this. That's okay. Uh, Alabama still found a way to beat an Auburn team on the road in a rivalry game. They didn't cover the 20 points. That's fine. But the offense, when they had to play well, they did. When it was crunch time, they went... What was it, like something like 85, 90 yards, maybe more than that, to make it a game in overtime? I was impressed by their grit. There's two trains of thought you could have here. You say a bad win or a gritty win. I side with the latter. That's just me. I think Nick Saban is going to have this team ready to play against Georgia. It'll be a really, really good game. Alabama's not done just yet. Okay, Don't, don't count out Alabama. That's a bad idea because Nick Saban's still the head coach. At number four, we're rolling with Cincinnati Bearcats. And again, college football playoff committee's worst nightmare. Cincinnati's sitting right at number four. If you ask me, I don't think they control their own destiny just yet. They need one of these three things to happen. They need either a Georgia win over Alabama, Baylor over Oklahoma State, or Iowa over Michigan. Any of those happen, you're in good shape to make the college football playoff. Cincinnati. You play Houston this coming week. They're ranked. They're, that's a gift to you. The American Athletic Conference is giving you a gift with a ranked Houston team that could bolster your resume a little bit more. Haven't played a Power 5 opponent, I don't think, since they beat Notre Dame. And they beat Notre Dame pretty handily at their crib. So at number five, not Notre Dame, but Oklahoma State. 
And they looked real, real good against Oklahoma. Beat them 37 to 33, sent Lincoln Riley packing to Los Angeles. And that's a video we actually already have out on the channel, or if it's not on the channel already, it's coming out at some point today. So make sure you check that out because that's gonna be nothing but good stuff. But back to the point at hand, Oklahoma State, they control their own destiny. They will play a number eight ranked, according to the CFP, the rankings again coming out tomorrow. So we'll see if Baylor's around seven, I would guess. They're gonna play Baylor for the Big 12 title. If Oklahoma State wins that game, well, guess what? You're a one-loss conference champion in a year where there's been absolute madness. I think that Oklahoma State finds a way into this thing and potentially could bump out Cincinnati if you have a Alabama beating Georgia situation. If there's one spot left, I think Oklahoma State has a right to it as a one-loss Power 5 conference champion. So take it or leave it. It is what it is. I think they got a real good shot to control their own destiny. And lastly, ringing in at number six, you have CBS's favorite team, excuse me, NBC's favorite team in the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Now, here's the thing for Notre Dame. The only loss they have is to a top 10 and top four right now Cincinnati team. They got beat on their own turf, but since then, they've looked phenomenal. They've looked great. They're going to be awesome this weekend in their conference championship game. Oh, wait, they don't play a conference championship game, and that's what's hurting them right now because they would have a chance to showcase one more time to the committee and have the label of a conference champion if they're playing the ACC a power five conference champion but they're not so right now they're just hoping wishing waiting and praying for Georgia to beat Bama and for Cincinnati loss outside of that you want as much chaos as possible to open up as many spots as possible for Notre Dame but at the end of the day you need a little bit of help to get into the dance because you don't want to sign up with the conference because that NBC money is too good I'm just saying if curiosity killed the cat then green killed whatever Notre Dame would like to assign themselves to be metaphorically. Listen, this is the rankings right now. CFP with JD has this rankings. This is what the college football playoff committee should have. Will they? I don't know. They don't always get it right. But at the end of the day, I think we'll make sure we get the right four teams in there as the dust settles on this conference championship weekend. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to do another one of these before the conference championship games are played. So we're going to beat you to the punch on Selection Sunday and tell you what we think the final four is going to look like when it's all said and done. That has been it for us here at CFP with JD. Subscribe to the channel like I just mentioned. The party will continue to roll on. And guess what? We're going to see y'all next time.